I want to give a little background before we jump into the text. John is the last gospel written. There's four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John was the only disciple not to die of martyrdom. Uh, he lived uh, up into his late years, uh, somewhere around 95 A.D., somewhere in that range, maybe 96 A.D. He wrote the book of Revelation, wrote 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, and he wrote the gospel of John. But why write another gospel if there was already three great gospels? John wrote because the Holy Spirit wanted us to have four gospels. And they all give a different slant, a different angle to the situation. Just like if you come up on a car crash and the police officer shows up and he he asks a mechanic who saw it, hey, what did you see? Well, man, they're going to need a new radiator. Man, that whole front end's blown. You know, you, you ask an insurance guy that was standing there, and he says, oh, man, they're, I don't know what their deductible is, but uh, uh, they're going to have some problems. And you ask a mom, a mom who saw the wreck, and she says, oh, man, there was an eight-year-old kid in the back seat. Man, I, ho- I hope they're okay. And then there happened to be a nurse standing by, and that police officer asked the nurse, what did you see? Well, well the man, he, it looked like he has a contusion on the front of his head. He hit the steering wheel or something of that matter. They all four saw the same events, but they're giving it from their advantage point. That's what we have in the Gospels. And as we begin to look at John's Gospel, John has a specific mission in mind that is separate from the other three Gospel writers. He tells stories that aren't in the other Gospels. He tells us of Nick at night, John chapter 3, Nicodemus coming to Jesus Preached that a few weeks ago. Also preached from John chapter 4, the woman at the well. John is the only one that, that records this interaction. Also in John's Gospels, he has fewer miracles than any of the other Gospel writers. And he has more interactions with people. Seeing their transformation. Going from curiosity to people of faith. In John's Gospel, he has seven miracles. He calls them signs. A sign is something that points to something else. And John gives us seven signs that point to the reality of who Christ is. We more commonly call them miracles. Six of the seven signs, the miracles that he records, are only recorded in the gospel of John. One of those is the miracle that we're going to look at today, the invalid that was healed. In John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, at the end of John's gospel, he tells us why he writes the gospel. Listen to these words. Jesus performed many other signs, insert the word miracle there if you need to, and the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. So John's saying, hey, listen, guys, we were not at any point going to write down everything Jesus did and said. That was never the point. That was never the ambition or the goal. In fact, John would say, if we were to record all that Jesus ever did, all the libraries in the world couldn't hold all that he had undertaken. Verse 31, he goes on to say, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. He gives us these seven signs that all point to the same reality. Jesus is the Messiah. He is God in the flesh. And if you believe in him, you will have life eternal. So he strings these stories together, these miracles, these interactions with different people. And he's recording the conversations, giving us evidence of who Christ is and what he calls us to. 